What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at some very expensive peripherals that I use back there on my computer, uh, specifically a keyboard that costs $250 and a mouse that costs $100. Um, yeah, here, just, just, just take it. So I've been daily driving these for some months now, uh, so I want you guys to take a closer look at some very high tier gaming gear that I was able to obtain. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and get right into it. Let's go. Your CD key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. Now I already know what you're thinking. I must be absolutely insane to spend $350 on just a mouse and keyboard. And you're right, if I did that, I would be absolutely insane unless I just had so much money burning a hole in my pocket. But as you guys know, I like a good bargain around here. So I actually found this keyboard for sale on the Facebook marketplace for only 50 bucks. Yes, you heard me right. That's a $200 discount on this keyboard. Uh, why would that be? Well, when I first bought it, it was actually missing a key, specifically the F11 key. And honestly, if you were to look online for replacement keys for this specific keyboard, you literally couldn't find them at the time that I was looking for them anywhere. Uh, well, almost anywhere. So I was able to find someone selling them on eBay. It was pretty much a maker from like China or something like that. Uh, so I bought it and it took pretty much a month to ship, but pretty much in total, I only spent $55 on a keyboard that should have been $250. Very nice. So let's take a look at this thing. I have been daily driving the Logitech G915 wireless gaming mechanical keyboard for a few months now and I absolutely love it. But first, let's talk about its build quality and its looks. Um, first of all, it is so freaking thin. I actually really enjoy the way it can sit flat on your desk and it does not move your wrist position at all unless you prefer to use the retractable feet on the bottom to prop it up a bit. Uh, the feet also have two different height adjustments, which I've really never seen in a keyboard. That's pretty cool actually. Uh, and I've never seen it in one that I've owned before specifically. I thought I'd be using those more, but honestly, I've been using it laying flat on my desk the entire time I've owned it. And it gives me the sort of like minimal modernish vibe. Um, and I really enjoy it. It has a dark brushed aluminum finish with a mix of metal and plastic. Uh, kind of funny because you'd think for a $250 keyboard, the entire thing we made of like space grade aluminum or something, right? Uh, but nonetheless, the overall build is very solid and if you pick it up and try to flex it, it does flex a bit, but it does not flex to the point where it feels like it's flimsy and it's just gonna snap in your fingers or anything like that. The main point here is that in the looks department, it really rocks it because of its sleek and minimal design and it looks super premium as it should for this price. This keyboard features intelligent light sync RGB technology, which enables fully customizable per key lighting across the 16.8 million RGB goodness of colors. Uh, using the Logitech G software, you can fully customize your lighting layout and even download presets that others have made that fully customize it. This enables you to take those effects and sync them across your devices provided they're light sync enabled as well. Okay, aside from its obvious points in the looks department because it looks pretty awesome and feels really awesome uh, and the fantastic RGB lighting that will draw you in, what is the main reason you'd be buying a keyboard like this? Well, in my opinion, it's for the fantastic light speed technology that is built into it. The G915 features pro grade light speed wireless that achieves super fast one millisecond performance. This is the new wireless technology that is basically the standard for wireless these days and is just as good, if not even better, than playing wired now, which is absolutely crazy to say. Um, so now eSports pros, like a ton of them, are actually using this wireless technology in a lot of their uh, competition mice and keyboards. So if you need any more reassurance that this stuff works, that should be it. 
All right, so the G915 is also fully functional when plugged in via USB, so you can actually charge and play at the exact same time. So if you wanna play wired, you can. And on the subject of battery life, the G915 gets 30 hours at 100% brightness, which is totally awesome. Uh, and so if you keep it a little dimmer, you can actually stretch that quite a bit further. I can honestly say that the battery life is fantastic, and it even has an auto off feature that turns the lighting off on the keyboard, which is really great from uh, pretty much saving you from reaching for that cable all the time. Um, in fact, when it's time to recharge it, it will actually start breathing red to indicate that it needs some more juice, and you can change that uh, in the G software as well. I usually just plug it in at night when I'm done gaming or something and let it charge overnight, and I probably really won't have to charge again for like another week after that, and honestly, I'm on my computer all the time, so that's pretty cool. And you can always check the battery life of all of your devices that are Logitech G enabled in the G software as well. All right, onto the switches. So this keyboard can be had with three different types of switches. Uh, first, the GL Clicky, which I own right there. Uh, and they are an audible click with a tactile feedback. Uh, there's GL Tactile, a pretty much gentle bump uh, for some tactile feedback and GL Linear, which is a completely smooth keystroke. Uh, for mine, like I said, I went with the GL Clicky, which I actually like really love. I almost didn't think I'd like it because I'm not a huge fan of the like huge clicky sound and all this stuff, but the actuation point feels super solid and there isn't a crazy amount of travel as you find with some mechanical switches uh, because they have this really awesome low profile design, which I really like now. I didn't know how much I would like these switches until I started typing and heard this. Ooh, that sweet clickiness. So this is now personally my favorite switch and I love using it every day. So now how about the keyboard layout and the feature set? Well, it basically has everything you'd ever need and more in my opinion. Starting with the five G keys on the left side, you're able to program these to do whatever you want. Personally, I use them to actually switch between my screens while I'm streaming no stream deck required now. The overall keyboard layout is very standard, extending out to the right with a full 10 key, which I actually end up using quite a bit. At the top left, there are three onboard profile buttons that you can easily switch between at a tap, your light speed and Bluetooth buttons that you can also switch between and connect this keyboard to multiple devices um, and your game button, which actually is able to disable that window key and uh, while gaming, you won't end up hitting it and messing up your game. And your brightness button to either brighten or dim the RGB lighting on the keyboard. Going over to the top right, you can see the dedicated media buttons as well as the free traveling volume scroll wheel, which I seriously appreciate as they are extremely convenient when gaming, listening to music, or watching any kind of content. At the very top, you have an on-off switch, and moving over to the right, you have your USB for charging. While on back, you have rubber feet all around the keyboard to keep the keyboard from sliding around, as well as retractable foot extensions on the board to prop the board up, as we discussed earlier. So as you guys can see, this keyboard has it in the looks department, and it pretty much packs every feature that you'd ever need. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at my very expensive keyboard, let's take a look at my, while still expensive, more moderate priced mouse, the Logitech G703. The G703 was my first choice to pair with the G915 because of the shape and size of it. I actually paid full retail for this because after trying one out at Best Buy of all places, I knew I'd love it. So as far as ergonomics go, this mouse is seriously perfect for me personally. Uh, I used to daily drive a Corsair Iron Claw, which was a bit larger admittedly, and it was really comfortable as well, honestly. But once I got used to this thing, Man, it's like the perfect extension of my arm for getting work done and high intensity gaming. This mouse also comes with light speed technology and can be used fully wireless or wired to charge while you play, just like the G915. It is equipped with a 32-bit ARM microprocessor and Logitech's new Hero 16K sensor, which boasts one-to-one -one tracking and up to 16,000 DPI, which admittedly, I'll honestly never use. Uh, but it's nice to know that it's there if you want to. I usually stick around 3200 DPI. Uh, and Logitech claims this technology also makes the mouse lighter and helps with the battery life as well. The G703 is PowerPlay compatible, so you can actually keep the mouse fully charged at all times while sitting atop a PowerPlay mouse pad. 
Uh, there is a 10 gram weight disc on the bottom of the mouse that you can replace with their power core, it's called, uh, giving the power play charging ability. I personally prefer my large gaming mouse mat from Corsair, so I pass on this option. The main reason I wasn't worried about that was the battery life. Just like the G915, this mouse has an amazing battery that can last up to 35 hours with lighting and up to 60 hours with no lighting on a full charge. And I can personally say, I've never even thought about needing to use a charging mouse mat because it literally never dies on me. And again, that's be and I'm on my PC pretty much every single day when I need to work. Taking a look around the mouse, you can see that it has an awesome build quality and they use a very nice rubberized texture that feels awesome in your hand. The overall shape of it basically changed me from being a palm grip to a fingertip grip, and now that I'm used to it, I actually love it. Uh, it only weighs 95 grams without the optional 10 gram weight in it, and to me personally, it is the sweet spot. The mouse has six buttons, all of which are programmable, but really most people will only mess with the two extra side buttons that you see here. Uh, this mouse is perfect for COD Modern Warfare, by the way, because the left front button ends up defaulting as your mount button, which is pretty cool. The clicks from the main left and right buttons feel very responsive and they give a very tactile click as shown here. The G703 is also equipped with LightSync RGB and it can be fully customized in the Logitech G Hub along with your other sync devices just like the G915. Okay, so now that you've seen these peripherals and heard about what they do and all the features that they pack, do I think that you should buy them? Well, yes and no. So if you're looking to find you know, a great bang for your buck set of peripherals, these are not the things to buy for you. Uh, they are so good and so well made, but the fact that the keyboard itself comes in at $250 retail, it is so hard to recommend that someone actually goes out and buys this for the full price. Uh, that's not to say the price isn't warranted, as the technology inside this thing is pretty unreal, and it pretty much kept me from having to drill a hole in my desk to hide those pesky keyboard wires. The mouse, on the other hand, I can totally recommend as it is a little more reasonably priced. Uh, and if you're looking for a fast, responsive, and damn good looking FPS style mouse, this is right up there at the top for the top rated mice for me. Uh, long story short, I'm extremely happy with these devices and they will probably be on my desk for quite a while. So that's gonna be it, you guys. I hope you like this look into some expensive hardware for once, since usually we do more budget-oriented things around here on the channel. Uh, and if you're absolutely nuts like me and you wanna get your hands on these premium products, I'll have them linked in the description description below for you. As always, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so you can be the first to know when a new stream or a new video will be going live. And until the next one guys, I'll see you later. Bye.